Good morning, parents. This is Doug Williamson, one of the counselors from the Elementary School Counseling Office with this presentation for you on supporting parents during school closure, taking care of yourself, because we know quite a few of you are dealing with having to be teachers at home, and we want to reach out and help you. So I'm joined this morning by... Um, good morning. My name is Kate Kersey, and I am one of the other elementary school counselors. I work with kindergarten, grade one, and grade two. Hi, and I'm Matt Johnson. I'm the school psychologist um, and uh, working with the, the preschool programs as well. All right. Next slide. So we acknowledge the fact that these are highly unusual times. We are all going through something that is unknown to all of us. And we know that you're balancing quite a bit. You're having to be teacher, you're having to be worker, you're having to be spouse, you're having to be parent. And it's a lot to carry. And for many of you, you're being thrust into the role of being a teacher, which you have no training for, and which is a new role for many of you. And we also acknowledge the fact that you're having to learn new computer programs. Um, I myself just learned last week how to do Zoom, how to do Seesaw. So it's new waters for all of us. And for those of you whose native language is not English, that's even an additional barrier that you must contend with. So we understand it's not easy. So the question is, what can you do? And one of the things we're gonna talk about the most, you've got to take care of yourself. But how do you do that? First thing, you need to take care of yourself. You cannot pour from an empty cup. The analogy that people also sometimes use is if you think about putting on an oxygen mask when you're on the plane and they're giving that little guide of safety, they always say, put your mask on first, before putting on the mask of a child. And you need to take care of yourself first. If you don't, you're not gonna have anything to pour out or anything to give. So you need to find those spaces where you can take care of yourself. One of the most important things you can do is to allow yourself some breathing time before monitoring and jumping in with virtual learning. And that breathing time is gonna look different depending who you are, and that breathing time is gonna look different from day to day. So it may be something as short as coming home from work and kind of what you see in the picture, just kicking back or going to your room and giving yourself five or 10 minutes before you start in on your child's virtual learning. It might be longer than that. It might be an entire day. As a family, we need to take a break today. We'll get to it tomorrow, but you need to find that breathing time. One of the other things that can make a huge difference in how you cope is your sleep. Guidelines say as an adult, it's best to get eight hours of sleep. And I know that's not always easy. And right now, stress, anxiety, work, that may be even more of a challenge. But to the best of your ability, sleep does wonderful effects on our body. So as much as you can, even if you got to grab a nap every now and then, try to get as close as you can to eight hours of sleep. The other thing this, I would, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. The other thing I would add to this is make sure that you are disconnecting from your screen or from your technology about I guess ideally they say several hours before you go to bed, but I would say at least one hour before you go to bed. And if you can't disconnect from technology, try and dim your screen because with the dimmed screen, it actually helps us when it is time, it helps our brain to know that it is time to go to sleep. Okay, so um, another way that's really important right now to take care of ourselves is by exercising. And um, by exercising, we mean whatever feels good for you and for your body to move in a way that is, um, that is kind of nurturing, maybe even joyful for you. Um, that could be taking a walk. It could be um, riding your bike, doing a video of yoga. Um, 
going on YouTube, looking up Zumba, dancing, um, whatever way helps you to kind of, first of all, get in the zone of um, doing something physical, but also second of all, like releasing those chemicals, those neurochemicals in your brain and in your body that release stress and um, help you to actually feel better. We also rec recommend just being. So taking those mindful moments of making sure you're breathing, you're being aware of what you hear, or you're being aware of your body, you're being aware of your breathing, um, but just taking those moments of just being. Um, Mr. Will has come up with the great saying of pockets of pleasure, really um, acknowledging and like appreciating those moments that are um, full of joy for you. Um, and look for those glimpses of beauty around us because they are there. Right now, we're all anxious and we can't avoid it. We can't run away from it. We can't pretend it's not there. And I think it's really important that we embrace it. And it's okay to feel anxious. Um, that anxious feeling actually serves a good, a good purpose. It's making sure that we're keeping ourselves safe right now, making sure that we're washing our hands, making sure that we're keeping that six feet distance from other people. So that anxiety can actually serve us a good, a, can be a good purpose for us. However, that said, if you start to notice that your own anxiety is starting to get too much, too overwhelming, you are becoming too fixated on things, um, you are too stressed, that is when anxiety um, tips and goes into um, distress and can actually have negative effects on your mind and on your body. Um, so please do make sure that you're reaching out to um, us as counselors if you are feeling overwhelmed. Um, so, is this me or you? <laughs> I can take this one. Okay. Sure. Um, you know, one of the one of the things that we can do to to help things go as smoothly as possible, and I'm sure all, all of you are are doing some version of this, is is establishing a new routine, um, and helping your child set up a, a schedule so that virtual learning occurs around the same time and place every day. Um, having that consistency can can really help students. Um, obviously including, including breaks and lunch. Um, one of the things we really do want to stress the importance of is, is not going beyond the ISB guidelines for um, amount of time spent on virtual learning during the day. Um, you know, and when we kind of compare that to what our typical day looks like, um, we have a lot of students that work at very different um, paces and some students might get more work done than others in a day. Um, but we do have set time limits while we are at school as well. Um, and we really believe that it's important for those um, time limits to, to be in place at home as well. Um, so if you haven't finished um, you know, the work for the day, that's okay. Um, you, know, you can come back to it um, again tomorrow. Um, and share the load, um, you know, when possible. We, we completely understand that this, this isn't always possible. Um, but if you can, kind of take team virtual school um, with, uh, you know, different parents taking turns uh, when possible. Again, we fully recognize that this isn't always an option, um, but really trying to share the load, not just with the virtual school, but, you know, this is a unprecedented times and um, helping out sharing the load around the home um, is really going to make everything go a lot more smoothly for, for everyone in the household. One of the things we, we try to think of, you know, we're, we're trying to find, you know, the silver linings, right? And, and for some that might be really difficult. Um, and for others, it, it, this may provide more of an opportunity um, to explore some non-academic learning um, that, you know, we believe is really important to, to create balance in our kids. Um, you know, so we encourage you to, you know, take on some new passion pro projects if you can. Um, if you feel like that's, uh, you know, a possibility for you. Um, cooking together, um, growing plants together, um, learning how to wash dishes or take care of a pet, um, coloring, dancing, playing a game together. Um, 
if you can, try to take advantage of some of the, the time that we are given um, and, and try to explore some things that maybe um, you wouldn't have had the opportunity, you know, outside of these circumstances. And most importantly, give yourself a break. Um, you know, like I said, this, these, you know, these situation is unprecedented in modern times. Um, so don't be too hard on yourself. Um, you know, the whole world is going through this together. Um, you know, so, so we're certainly not alone. Um, and in thinking that through, like, don't place unrealistic expectations on yourself. Um, you know, we acknowledge that parents are being thrust into the position of, um, you know, running a household, being a parent, and now additionally being a teacher. Um, and that's incredibly stressful. Um, however, we believe, we know that, you know, your ability as a teacher is not going to cause lifelong damage to your child. Your child will learn. Um, and so, so please be realistic about your expectations for both yourself in this situation, as well as um, what's reasonable for, for your child with regard to virtual learning. And I'd like to add, I think, two things on this slide. Um, try not, so we're all on social media. We're all on Instagram, we're all on Facebook, we're all on Twitter, and people are out there posting incredibly ideal versions of parenting right now. Um, and I would say try not to compare yourself to people that look like they're really like winning at virtual school. Um, winning at virtual school looks like looks very different in each and every household. So try not to compare yourself to the folks that have the incredible color coded schedules. Um, your, your good enough is good enough right now. And that's, that's, that's good. The second thing I would say is give yourself a break even on, um, I don't know if this is going to be covered later on in our presentation, but give yourself a break from news in general right now and really limit the amount of exposure that, that you are taking in and make sure the news that you are taking in is from very reliable, non-sensationalized sources like um, take a look at the CDC, the WHO as your main sources of, of good factual information. So that's a, a kind of a great segue into this is that, you know, during these times, you know, our parenting will change. Um, and as Kate was alluding to, you know, let's be okay with being okay right now. Um, you know, the goal is not to be parent of the year. Um, I, you know, I can share in my own personal situation for, for my um, young son, you know, he is engage, engaging and watching more screen time than I ever thought that he would. Um, you know, and, and I have to remind myself that, you know, that we are in completely, you know, um, bizarre circumstances. And, you know, his, my parenting is, has had to change to kind of adapt to the situation that we're in. And part of that is that, you know, we're inside a lot more and um, he's going to get more screen time. Um, that's been hard for me to let go, but I am now able to let go of that. And I think that that's really important um, for us to let go a little bit as parents to say that, you know, we're in a really weird situation and, um, you know, we just need to do what works right now. And try to laugh. Um, you know, I think try to find the humor in the situation. You know, the group hug from, you know, 2020 is a great example. Um, and, you know, I feel like I have a lot of uh, these situations um, as you run into people and, you know, you do the, you know, the hug from afar, you know, and, um, you know, whenever we can to try to find the positive or find the, the lighthearted side of things, I think it, it really helps our, our, our mental health and just overall well-being. And connect, um, you know, make the most of our friendships. Um, you know, we are so, you know, interconnected now um, over long distances, um, you know, so reaching out and, and talking to friends, um, you know, social distancing does not mean social isolation. Um, so, you know, while still following the social distancing guidelines, we can still interact with people. We can still, 
um, get outside and still engage um, and uh, kind of partake in those uh, daily activities that, that can keep us going through this hard time. Um, so really, you know, it might be easy to, to really, really disconnect, but I think, you know, pushing ourselves to get out and, and connect with people that, that we care about, whether that's online or, or you know, from six feet away, um, is really, really important to us as, as human beings. Some ideas I've heard on this is I know that some folks are doing like digital dinner parties and um, virtual play dates where the kids are just on their screen together with a friend, but playing. And that's a really great way for, for your kids to connect, but also for us as adults to connect. Okay. okay. Thank you and Thank stay you. safe and take care. <laughs>